Welcome back to Hardware Unbox for another GPU pricing update video. And the news this month continues a super positive trend that began at the start of this year. With the cryptocurrency market pooping the bed this month and demand among gamers slowing right up in anticipation of next gen products later this year, GPU pricing this generation has never been in a better position. In fact, by the sounds of it, supply has recovered to such a degree that retailers may be in a bit of strife trying to shift all current gen stock before new GPUs arrive. And that's why pricing continues to fall across the entire market. Before we look at the data this month though, today's video is sponsored by Brilliant, the interactive online learning platform for everyone. I've taken a lot of courses in my life, including lots of boring lectures at university, but I've found Brilliant to be the best suited to how I learn effectively. Brilliant's lessons are fun, interactive, hands-on, and suitable for anyone who wants to improve their understanding of STEM topics. I'm using Brilliant to learn all about neural networks right now, and the hands-on explanations of the concepts are very impressive. I'd also recommend the computer memory course if you want a deep dive into how the hardware we all love actually works. Head to brilliant.org slash hardware unbox to get started for free with Brilliant's interactive lessons. The first 200 viewers will also get 20% off an annual membership. Once again, brilliant.org slash hardware unboxed. June is actually the first month since the launch of the Ampere GPU series over 18 months ago that you can readily find an NVIDIA RTX 30 card below MSRP. Two cards currently meet that criteria, the just launched RTX 3090 Ti, which was never really sustainable at its $2,000 MSRP, and currently sits more like $1,650 new. And the RTX 3080 Ti, which is selling for 17% under MSRP on Newegg right now, or at least when we gathered the data for this video. I wouldn't go so far to say $1,000 is a great deal for a 3080 Ti when other slightly slower models are still a fair bit cheaper, but it's great to finally see some of the inflated MSRPs fall to the sword of consumer demand. However, this availability of below MSRP NVIDIA GPUs really only applies at the high end of their lineup. If we take a look at all current generation models, there is still price inflation for a lot of older models, especially those that launched in 2020 or the early parts of 2021. On average, NVIDIA GPUs are selling for 9% above MSRP, but that inflation reaches 19% on average for the RTX 3080 and lower in the lineup. This is despite another 10% average reduction in retail price over the last month. What this level of inflation is currently causing is each NVIDIA GPU being priced pretty much into the tier above it. The RTX 3050 should be a $250 GPU, but the cheapest models are available for $330, the MSRP of the RTX 3060. Then the RTX 3060, which should be $330, now becomes $380, close to the price of the RTX 3060 Ti. And this continues all the way up the stack to the RTX 3070 Ti, which is effectively priced like an RTX 3080. Prices for these cards do continue to fall, so I expect MSRP levels are possible, but even in the conditions facing the market right now, we still aren't there. I'm certainly very curious to see how low pricing can get before the next generation, because if pricing never falls to to MSRP, even in a GPU inventory clearout, that will be strong evidence for the advertised prices being largely fake. Though, let's be honest, they're already fake enough as it is. As for the more general pricing trend, anyone that bought a new NVIDIA GPU just a few months back in March has likely been burnt pretty hard. GPUs like the RTX 3080 have come down from $1,100 to just $770 in the space of a few months, and the RTX 3070 has seen similar, falling from $860 to just $580. It was certainly very dicey for people back in 2021, but it's great to now see some reward for people that have decided to hold out and wait for as long as possible. On the AMD GPU side, the market has decided that the MSRP is no longer appropriate for most of the RX 6000 series lineup. 7 of 11 models are selling below MSRP right now at Newegg, with the only significant holdouts being the first models to be released, the RX 6800 XT and RX 6800. Some cards are as much as 10% below the MSRP, like the 6900 XT and 6600. Even some of AMD's recently released models, like the RX 6650 XT, couldn't hold their MSRP for very long, with some OEMs apparently just conceding they're unsellable at their launch price when other models are cheaper and perform similarly. While pricing is generally sitting below MSRP for AMD's lineup, prices have also fallen less than Nvidia month on month, with just a 5% reduction on average. 
This points to AMD GPU pricing either bottoming out or getting close to it and price reduction slowing, as we've come off an 8% drop in May and 15% drop in April, all while Nvidia card price drops have been more consistent. This does make sense as a lot of cards have reached the MSRP and I think retailers and OEMs will be hesitant to quickly push prices further below, especially if that results in a loss on that inventory. Here's how AMD and Nvidia's lineups compare to one another. In most categories, we're seeing similar competition to last month. The most notable change at the high end is the price drop for the RTX 3080 Ti, which now sees it priced below the RX 6950 XT, which really makes that AMD card look a bit silly. The RTX 3080 is also now a much more direct competitor for AMD's RX 6800 XT, another matchup that looks a bit unfavorable for the red team. In the middle of the market, the RTX 3070 is essentially the only card occupying around $600 right now. The 6700 XT continues to be slightly cheaper than the 3060 Ti, though the margin is shrinking. Then in the lower parts of the market, Nvidia has improved its position to a small degree, but AMD still looks very reasonable here with the 6600 XT coming in cheaper than the RTX 3060 and the RX 6600 offering more performance than the RTX 3050 around the same price. As for whether you should buy any of these GPUs, here's my current advice for the market as it stands right now and what we are expecting in the next couple of months. I'm going to split this up into four main sections. So if you're interested in a high-end NVIDIA GPU, I think it's now time to not consider these products under most circumstances. Products on the RTX 3080 and above are likely to be superseded within six months, and the expectation is that next-gen products will be significantly faster. The crypto market has also soiled its pants to such a degree that a fast rise in prices, like we saw around the launch of the RTX 30 series, is looking very unlikely just a few months after a big crash. Of course, I don't know for sure what the crypto market will do, but weak demand for crypto will help stabilize GPU pricing around the launch of next-gen cards and should see prices return to MSRP more quickly than last time. The reason why prices continued to be inflated for so long was largely due to crypto mining. So if that isn't a pressure for this upcoming generation, expect better pricing and availability for GPUs. The only exception to this suggestion to not buy is if you see a significant discount that brings pricing well below MSRP from a reputable seller. I'm talking $500 RTX 3080s, that sort of thing, is probably where you could justify buying. But at $1,600 for an RTX 3090 at the moment, I think that's a hard pass. If you're more interested in a mid-range or lower tier NVIDIA GPU, my advice is to wait a few more months. Pricing for NVIDIA GPUs continues to fall at a steady pace, suggesting we haven't hit the bottom of the market yet, especially as many GPUs continue to be sold above the MSRP. At this point, you may as well wait for the bottom to be hit. However, unlike with higher end cards, I think buying a mid-range GPU right now can be a sensible move if you find a good price, because I don't expect Nvidia to release next generation mid-range products until well into 2023, especially for below, say, $350 US. For high-end AMD GPUs, my advice here is pretty similar to buying a high-end Nvidia GPU. These products are likely to be superseded by the end of the year. While pricing for cards like the RX 6900 XT is more reasonable than with some of Nvidia's high-end products, I still think now is a good time to simply pass over this generation and wait for what's coming next. If you do have $800 to $1000 to spend on a GPU, buying now will probably see a significant amount of that money go to waste, again unless you see a massive discount well below MSRP, so maybe a stopgap GPU option is a more suitable choice. For mid-range and entry-level AMD GPUs, I think this is probably the only category where I'd say that buying now could be a reasonable choice. Pricing for AMD cards appears to be slowly bottoming out, so if you wait another month or two, you may only end up seeing a percentage drop in the single digits for pricing. I also don't expect these GPUs to be immediately superseded, especially in the, say, RX 6600 XT tier, so what is available in that sub $400 market is probably here to stay for some time. Flipping over now to have a look at the used market, if you have an older generation product, the market has quickly turned from a seller's market to a buyer's market. Prices for Nvidia RTX 20 series cards are now well below MSRP, as they should be, with prices falling 12% this month. In fact, prices have basically halved since the start of this year. Cards like the RTX 2080 Ti used to be sold for $1,100 used. Now you're getting just $550 on average, so if you've held off selling, you've really missed an opportunity to cash in. 
The GeForce GTX 16 series has fallen in price by 16% on average, with over 20% drops for the 1660 series in particular. The entire lineup is now being sold used for at or below the MSRP, and you will no longer find 16 series cards above $200 on average. With the RTX 3050 sitting where it is, as well as pressure from AMD, it makes sense that you wouldn't spend more than $200 on a used card from this family. Last month I said I wouldn't recommend buying a Pascal GPU as they're too old, and I think that is still true today, though pricing is getting very cheap for some of these cards. Volumes for older models like the GTX 1070 continue to be really strong, which suggests to me that a lot of Pascal owners have finally decided to upgrade and get rid of their old GPU. With strong supply comes a fall in price, with this series dropping by 16% on average. Now that crypto mining is practically dead, AMD cards from the RX 5000 series are flooding the market as these cards were especially good for mining. Pricing fell a whopping 24% month on month for these models, finally seeing prices below MSRP on the used market. Just be warned that a lot of cards being sold through eBay in this series will be ex-mining models, as gamers still using these GPUs had plenty of chances to sell their RX 5700 XT to a miner last year and upgrade to a faster 6700 XT for free. Similar story for the Vega and Polaris generations. The RX 500 series was popular among miners and prices have tumbled for those models, helping this family fall also by 24% on average month on month. These prices are much more suitable for the age and performance of these models. The RX 588GB isn't too bad for just $150 used, I'd certainly get that over the newer RX 6500 XT or RX 6400. Overall, it's been another good month for GPU pricing as expected, continuing a trend of steady price reductions that began at the start of the year. Supply is plentiful, it's easy to find any model that you like, and some cards have halved in price since January, which is a huge win for GPU consumers. With the crypto market falling, it's also setting up this next generation of graphics cards nicely, where without mining as a threat, it should be easier to maintain availability and respectable prices in the months post-launch. The only negative here is that there is a little bit of a feeling that it's too little too late for this current generation of cards. Despite many models being priced at or even below the MSRP, I can only recommend people buy some of the lower tier cards, nothing in the high end. The impending launch of new GPUs and pricing only just reaching the MSRP doesn't seem attractive enough to me. At this point, these models should be well below MSRP as many are approaching two years old. With that said, it sounds like there's a lot of inventory still remaining at retailers and manufacturers, and there are still a lot of mining GPUs to hit the used market. This could cause some of these cards that should be a lot cheaper to actually be a lot cheaper, especially once next-gen products are announced and the usual flood to get rid of old stock starts to happen. Expect a rush of deals as retailers and even owners try and clear out their old models before taking too great of a loss. Not that I'll shed a single tear for the manufacturers and distributors that have made absolute bank sucking cash from gamers this past year and a half. Anyway, that's it for this monthly update of GPU prices. If you do like our analysis of these things monthly, do subscribe to Hard Run Box because we will continue to do these monthly, probably into the next generation of GPUs as well, because I'm very interested to see what the pricing and availability of next-gen GPUs is like and how quickly it takes for those cards to hit the MSRP if it turns out that they are inflated at launch like we're expecting for probably a couple of months. So yeah, we'll continue doing this for at least the next little while. Anyway... That's it, I guess. Uh, also support us on Patreon and Flip Plane if you're interested. But apart from that, I will catch you in the next one.